Hi friends, welcome to Story Camp. It's good for us to be together again. Let me share a verse with you. It was the verse that um, we were thinking about when we thought up the idea of Story Camp. It's from the Gospel of Matthew, the 14th chapter, and it's the message translation. It says this, all Jesus did that day was tell stories. A long storytelling afternoon. His storytelling fulfilled the prophecy. I will open up my mouth and tell stories. I will bring out things hidden since the world's first day. What a great thought. What a great thought. Jesus used stories to tell us about God's love. Jesus knew that stories were the language of our heart, that our ears really open up and we really pay attention when someone tells us stories, when someone teaches us something using stories. So that's the idea behind Story Camp. We want to learn more and more about God's love and we're using a story. We're using Kenneth Graham's The Wind and the Willows. Let's get started. Chapter 2 the open road. Here we are on the side of a road in Cattaraugus County um, and we're ready to find out what happens next to our friends in the wind and the willows. Here we go. Ratty, said the mole suddenly one bright summer morning, if you please, I want to ask you a favor. The rat was sitting on the riverbank singing a little song he had just composed himself so he was very taken up with it and not really pr paying proper attention to Mole or to anything else. Finally, Mole caught Rat's attention and asked, Won't you take me to call on Mr. Toad? I've heard so much about him and I do so much want to make his acquaintance. Why, certainly, said the good-natured Rat, jumping to his feet and dismissing poetry from his mind for the day. Get the boat out and we'll paddle up there at once. It's never the wrong time to call on Toad. Early or late, he's always the same fellow. Always good-tempered, always glad to see you, always sorry to see you go. Rounding a bend in the river, they came in sight of Toad Hall. They disembarked and found Toad on a wicker chair in the garden with a large map spread out on his knees. I was just going to send a boat down the river for you, Ratty, said Toad. It's about your rowing, I suppose, said the rat with an innocent air. You're getting on fairly well, though you do splash a good bit. But with a great deal of patience and any quantity of my coaching, you may... Oh, poo, boating, said Toad. No, I've discovered the real thing. The only genuine occupation for a lifetime. I propose to devote the remainder of my life to it. He led the way to the stable yard accordingly, the rat following with a most mistrustful expression, and there, drawn out of the coach house into the open, they saw a caravan, shining with newness, painted a canary yellow with green and red wheels. A caravan is like an old-fashioned camper, but instead of being motorized, it's drawn by a horse. There you are, cried the toad. There's real life for you. The open road, a dusty highway, camps, villages, towns, cities, here today, up and off to somewhere new tomorrow. Travel, change, interest, excitement, the whole world before you and a horizon that's always changing. You'll find that nothing whatever has been forgotten when we make our start this afternoon. Um, I beg your pardon, said the rat slowly as he chewed a straw, but did I overhear you say something about we and start and this afternoon? Now, you dear good old ratty, said Toad imploringly, don't begin talking in that stiff and sniffy sort of way because you know you've got to come. I can't possibly manage without you, so please consider it settled and don't argue. I want to show you 
the world. Um, I, I don't think so, said the rat doggedly. I'm not coming, and that's flat. And I am going to stick to my old river and live in a hole and boat as I've always done. And what's more, Mole's going to stick to me and do as I do. Aren't you, Mole? Of course I am, said the Mole lo loyally. I'll always stick to you, Rat. All the same, it sounds as if it might have been, well, maybe, sort of, rather fun, you know. The Rat saw what was passing in Mole's mind and wavered. He didn't want to disappoint his friends. He was fond of the Mole and would do almost anything to help him out. Toad was watching both of them closely. During luncheon, which was excellent, of course, as everything at Toad Hall always was, the Toad simply let himself go and sort of disregarded the rat's feelings. Until it soon seemed taken for granted by all three of the friends that the trip was a settled thing. And the rat, though still unconvinced in his mind, allowed his good nature and loyalty to his friends override his personal objections. He could not bear to disappoint. And they were already deep in schemes and anticipations, planning out each day's adventures for several weeks to come. Later that day, tired and happy and miles from home, the friends stopped, turned the horse loose to graze, and ate their simple supper, sitting on the grass by the side of the road. Toad talked big about all he was going to do in the days to come, while stars grew fuller and larger all around them, and a yellow moon, appearing suddenly and silently from nowhere in particular, came to keep them company and listen to their talk. At last, they turned into their little bunks in the caravan, and Toad, kicking out his legs, sleepily said, well, good night, friends. This is the real life for us gentlemen. Talk about your old river. I don't talk about my river, replied the patient rat. You know I don't, Toad, but I think about it. I think about it all the time. The mole responded by whispering, I'll do whatever you like, Ratty. Shall we run away tomorrow morning quite early and go back to our dear old hole near the river? No, no, we'll see it out, whispered back the rat. Thanks awfully, but I ought to stick by Toad till this trip is ended. It wouldn't be safe for him to be left by himself. It won't take very long. His fads never do. Good night. The end was indeed nearer than even the rat suspected. The next day, they were strolling along the high road when far behind them, they heard a faint warning hum like the drone of a distant bee. Glancing back, they saw a small cloud of dust with a dark center of energy advancing on them at incredible speed. While from out of the dust, a faint, wailed like an uneasy animal in pain. Hardly regarding it, they turned to resume their conversation when in an instant, as it seemed, the peaceful scene was changed and with a blast of dust, a whirl of sound that made them jump for the nearest stitch, it was on them. The <laughs> poop poop from the horn of a shiny new motor car. The old gray horse, being thoroughly frightened, drove the car backward toward the deep ditch at the side of the road. It wavered an instant, then there was a crash. The canary-colored cart, their pride and their joy, lay on its side, an absolute wreck. The rat danced up and down in the road. You villains, he shouted, shaking both fists. You scoundrels, you highwaymen, you, you road hogs. I'll have the law on you. I'll report you. I'll take you through all the courts. Toad, however, sat straight down in the middle of the dusty road, 
his legs stretched out before him and stared fixedly in the direction of the disappearing motor car. He breathed short, his face wore a placid, satisfied expression, and at intervals he faintly murmured, Poop, poop. Rat and Mole found him in a sort of trance, a happy smile on his face, his eyes still fixed on the dusty wake of their destroyer. At intervals he was still heard to murmur, Finally, glorious, stirring sight, murmured Toad, the poetry of motion, the real way to travel, the only way to travel, motor cars, oh bliss, oh poop, poop, oh my, oh my. Oh, what are we to do with him, asked the mole of the water rat. Nothing at all, replied the rat firmly because there is really nothing to be done. You see, I know him. I've seen this before. He's just not thinking well. Come on, it's five or six miles to the nearest town and we shall just have to walk it. The sooner we make a start, the better. Now look here, Toad, said the rat sharply when they were down the road a bit. As soon as we get to the town, you'll have to go straight to the police station and see if they know anything about that motor car and who it belongs to and lodge a complaint. Police station? Complaint, murmured Toad dreamily. Me complain of that beautiful, that heavenly motor car? On reaching the town, they went straight to the station where they purchased tickets for a, for a train that landed them not far from Toad Hall. Rat and Mole then escorted the spellbound, sleepwalking Toad to his door, put him inside it, and instructed his housekeeper to feed him and put him to bed. Then they got out their boat from the boathouse rode down the river home, and at a very late, late hour, sat down to supper in their own cozy riverside parlor to the rat's great joy and contentment. The following evening, the mole, who had risen late and taken things very easy all day, was sitting on the bank fishing when the rat, who had been visiting with friends, came strolling along to find him. Heard the news, he said. There's nothing else being talked about all along the river bank. Toad went up to town by an early train this morning, and he has ordered a very large and very expensive motor car. Well, chapter two, let's think about that a bit before we go. Let's think about the kingdom of God. We've been talking about what it's like when we as disciples live under the reign of God's love in the kingdom of God. And we talked about friendship being such an important part of the kingdom of God. And in this chapter, chapter two, we understand a little bit more about what friendship means. We understand it means loyalty. It means loyalty. And uh, we see this, we see Rat being uh, very loyal to Mole who wants to go visit uh, Toad Hall. We see Rat being very loyal uh, to the river uh, when Toad suggests that maybe he should be disloyal to the river. Um, we see Ratty um, being very loyal to Toad, even when Toad is a little disagreeable um, and maybe not thinking well all the time. We see Mole being uh, very faithful, very loyal to Ratty, saying, you know what, Ratty, if you're missing home and you want to go home, I'll go with you. Uh, loyalty is such a wonderful part of friendship. Um, God is loyal to us and God is calling us to respond by being loyal to God and loyal to um, each other. Um, we've talked about home. Uh, we see how much Ratty and Mole love their home and how much they miss uh, home. We're missing church right now, our church home, aren't we? We're, we're This time where we're asked to stay at home for safety of ourselves and safety of others, uh, we're missing home and that's a good thing. It's good to miss home. It's good to have a sense of home and it's good to share our homes with each other. 
Um, nature, we've been talking about nature. Again, we see how much um, Raddy loves the river. Again, Raddy calling the river his friend. Uh, we see them keeping company with the stars and the moon uh, when they're uh, camping out in the caravan um, on the side of the road. Um, nature is our friend. It's uh, so often how we see God's love coming into our lives. I want to share from Psalm 103, verse 17. It talks about God's loyalty to us. It says, But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with their children's children. This is such a wonderful verse. It's a transformative verse. It calls us to a place of transformation where we are trusting God's loyalty to us, God's faithful to, faithfulness to us, everlasting to everlasting. And uh, we are called to respond to that by being faithful to others, being faithful to God. So lots of things to think about this week. Um, we're praying for you. We pray you know you're loved. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.